Dealing with compression on a master can be a time consuming and tricky process. And then it comes to being multiband, where you need to adjust the key factor of the track to better help the sonic balance. And this is where Isotope have really focused on with the impact module, making this process more streamlined and approachable for all levels. So while also providing a visual feedback that I've not seen anywhere else and have found really useful and gives a great insight into what's going on with my audio. So let's break down the module and see how it can benefit your work workflow. A little bit different to anything else essentially. Um, right at the top we've got Stereo Link. Yeah, it's a compressor. Stereo Link can be really useful if we've got something like really heavily panned, like I know for whatever reason the drum kit off to one side. We don't want that to then be impacting what's going on, on the right hand side. So we can either link them or separate. We can operate in mid side mode if we want to, but we're operating in stereo for now. We've got a mount and the amount slider is you know, much like a wet game, but it also directly correlates to the master assistant over here. We've then got our band split in here. If you've used Ozone before, you're used to this interface. You know, the sliders here can be picked and we can move where our bands are or each individual part. Then on the left here, we've got one, two, three, four, each corresponding to the bands in that order. So from left to right and the color code is also linked to each one as well. Here we've got the auto bands, delta and sync. We'll go over those in just a moment. And here we've got our visual feedback of essentially the four different compressors across the bands and what each one's doing, which is by far to me the most useful thing to see what's happening dynamically in each of those spaces and then what the processing is doing to it and where you're putting each sound. Really, really helpful. Essentially think of it like this. We can solo the low band here on this track and we can see exactly what's going on in that solo band everything's color coded so we know that we're blue here we've got this blue band we've pushed up and that's what we're seeing here if we were to push it up we very simply expand it bring it down we can press it but notice how it's pretty much staying around the zero on the middle here. And that's because the auto gain is doing a lot of work. Now the auto gain is working smart per band. So regardless of what we do with each band, the auto gain is looking to keep it where it was level wise. Do we give it loads more expansion and loads more transient? Or do we want to really flatten it out, but still keep it around the same spot? And then introduce another one and then we've got exactly that same kind of feedback and look we've reduced this one quite a bit but it's kept it right around where it should be i could reduce it a whole ton really compress it and it's doing its best to keep it around there but it does it with that individual one it doesn't affect the lower frequency so now we've just got that we could add extra dynamics here too if we wanted really really cut through. I found it best suppressed a little bit here and compressed. Now let's have the whole mix in context. So before the kick was here. You can see now it's represented with a flat line. There's no dynamic change happening to it. I found it nicer to just poke it out just a little bit. You can hear it a lot more, your ear picks it up. It's adding that extra transient into it. I've suppressed pretty much everything else and compressed it down. But we could, for example, go up here, or even up here with the shakers and the hats. Now we've compressed those to really squeeze in that high end a bit more, but I could add dynamic to them and have them stick out and really rattle them off like that. But the auto gain 
pretty much doing all of the hard work of where I'd usually be working out ratios and timing and then a gain control to get everything where it would be. It's just doing it as I adjust the slider on the fly and keeping everything matched, which is pretty, pretty powerful. However, it can be linked to BPM or if you know the correct release time of your track. In this instance, it's gonna be around the 83 millisecond mark. I can actually bring it in and have it so it sinks in that kind of timing. It works in the timing with the track. And we can then be ruthless and bring it all the way down to say 41. And you can see the different performance it has on the kick here when we push it to the extreme. So now if I'm gonna add the low end that around 83 is gonna be our ideal candidate. If you want to extend it out, we can. And having that rhythmic control over everything with the auto game feature is just potentially game changing. Now the link bands, this links all of the bands together, meaning now they're all linked. If I adjust one, it's gonna adjust the balance all together. So if I found a balance I like, but I wanna just tweak that in, the link bands lets us do that. very easily dial it into just where I want it to be. Delta, which lets us hear the difference that's occurring. In this case, we can hear just what is being changed to the audio. This lets us really easily dial in on exactly the differences we're making. Then we can switch sync on. Now for the moment, sync won't work for me. In this project, I'm mastering a whole album and there are various BPMs. But if you're working with just the one individual track or maybe an EP where everything's the same BPM, if you don't know how to work out the milliseconds for your track, there is an application called Audio Calc that you can download, which gives you all the kind of musical divisions and millisecond timings and things that you could ever desire. It's a really useful app, well worth grabbing. What I'm going to do now is just dial in my settings and we'll do a blind A and B. I'd like you to decide which one you thought sound better and was it an improvement overall? Do you know which one was which? Overall, Impact takes some very advanced compression techniques and gives you fast, intuitive access to them on a simple GUI with just enough of a feature set to really dial in what you're after. Now, this works outrageously well with the new stabilizer module added in Ozone 10. So click on this video next to make sure you know just how that works as well so you can get them working together seamlessly and get better masters. I will see you in that one. Get the